This is the Solid Signal Podcast for the week of September 25th, 2023. Wow, that sounds like the future, doesn't it? 2023, where are the flying cars? Makes me kind of wonder where all the flying cars are, because after all, it is 2023. I was led to believe there would be robot maids and and that I would be George Jetson by now and walking on this big uh, conveyor belt and that whole thing. But the, the present we have today is even better, um, I got to say. I uh, got my new iPhone 15 Pro, and yeah, I'm an Apple guy. So, um, and, and I'm not always excited about what Apple ha- brings to the table, but this this new phone actually, uh, I'm I'm a little more pleased than I expected because uh, first of all, it's lighter. I think this is the first time that I've had an iPhone that's lighter than the previous one in a long time. And second of all, the idea with the USB-C. Now I thought that okay, big deal, USB-C. Um, But it turns out that you can use USB-C for practically anything. You can connect up external hard drives and memory cards, and you can even connect up uh, your phone straight to Ethernet if that's what you want to do. And there's there's a lot that USB-C brings to the table that I didn't really think about, and so I'm super excited about that. But that's not really the subject of this week's podcast. I want to tell you... um, I've been talking to the folks in our Signal Connect division, the folks who handle new accounts, and they have been telling me just how quickly people are stampeding back to traditional pay television. Now, it it looks a little different than it did back maybe five, six years ago because both DirecTV and DISH have live streaming packages in addition to their satellite TV packages. But whether you stream it or beam it, as they say in direct TV land, the demand is incredibly high. And and I can see why. On the direct TV side, there are a couple of products that are really driving demand and driving it hard. Um, on the satellite side, residential customers now have the Gemini, which is an amazing little box, uh, does everything that you want to do, and it it gives you apps along with your satellite TV experience. DirecTV had lagged a little bit behind uh, Dish because Dish had had that for a long time and DirecTV hadn't. But now that there's parity there and a lot of DirecTV folks have been hanging on just waiting for this sort of thing. On the commercial side, the amount of demand for the new H26K receiver has blown everybody away. Honestly, it's one of those things you can be prepared for demand, but then, wow, you know, demand really kind of smacks you in the face. So... Yeah, I've talked about it before. The H26K is the new receiver for DirecTV commercial customers. It brings everything the H25 brought to the table, and it does 4K. And more importantly, it's all brand new, no refurbs. This is a solidly built piece of equipment. You can find my review on it on our YouTube channel or at blog.solidsignal.com. And if that wasn't enough, if you look at the DirecTV streaming side, It seems like we are seeing incredible, incredible demand for the new Gemini Air device. The Gemini Air was one of those weird things that was kind of leaked out to the public way too early, and they they chose to have what they thought was going to be a private beta test and turned into a very, very public beta test, so a lot of people knew about it. But now that it's available for everybody, we can barely keep these things on the shelves. And, And that's, you know, that's great for us, but... If it's something that you are interested in, if you're looking at the new Gemini Air, you want to be shopping at SolidSignal.com right now because we've got a great supply of them now. No guarantee that that's going to hold on. But, you know, I've been talking about DirecTV. Now, a lot of people had discounted DirecTV. Oh, they've got no Sunday ticket this year and whatever. And thinking that that counted DirecTV out. Seems like nothing could be further from the truth. It seems like uh, DirecTV made the right choice in choosing not to bid for NFL Sunday Ticket at that much higher price that the league wanted to charge. Google's got tons and tons of money. They can afford to throw it away if they want to. But DirecTV's got to be a little bit more responsible. Okay, take a breath. There we go. Um, but I've, I've talked thus far about DirecTV, and I, I have historically been more of a DirecTV fan. I, I admit that. But I would also like to talk a little bit about Dish because Solid Signal is a Dish Premier local retailer and we've had more success in Dish in the last six months than we had had ever in the history of our company. And that's an amazing thing. And it's due to the fact that Dish is doing some really amazing things 
for the market that they're trying to serve. Especially if you are a professional in some sense, if you're a, a police officer, nurse, firefighter, teacher, if you're in that kind of service kind of thing where you're, you know, you're taking care of the public, DISH wants to take care of you. And if you're over 55, um, then DISH has you covered. There's, there's some special stuff for folks over 55 that you, know, you want to find out about too. Because uh, Dish understands that these are the folks that, you know, these, these are your folks. These are the folks who really appreciate live television and Dish wants to pay you back by making sure that you're completely taken care of. Both DirecTV and Dish have some great products available now for homes, for RVs, for boats, for businesses, and there's really never been a better time. But I, I'm probably preaching it to the converted there. I have a feeling that if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably pretty well convinced that you know satellite TV is a pretty decent value for you. But maybe you don't realize that it is turning into a better and better value almost by default. Um, just over the weekend, I, I spent some time myself looking at how much money I spend on streaming services. It, it's very easy, even though you got month to month plans on all these things, it's very easy to just kind of let it go or to say, Oh, well, you know, pretty much every month I'm going to use it and it's not that much. So I'm just going to go ahead and whatever. And, and most streaming services cost less than one person's movie ticket. And, and when you look at it, you say, oh, well, go into the movies once for two people, throw in popcorn and you're in for 50 bucks. That's a lot more than cost of an entire month of streaming services. You can keep giving yourself excuses like that all day and all night. But the fact of the matter is I looked at how much money I was spending on streaming and I hadn't really put it together in that way in a while. And, you know, I, I'm spending more for streaming than I'm spending on pay television and pay television I, is where I end up going a lot. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of good stuff on streaming. And I, I will say during the summer, streaming probably gets a little bit more use than it does um, during the kind of the TV season, as it were, because, you know, there's um, I go out and I find old stuff to watch that I kind of like or whatever. But really, I, I'm still I'm a pay TV guy. And I have a feeling that a lot of you are, too. I, I'm the kind of guy that's like, OK, I've got my DVR. I've got my playlist. I've got my guide. These are the things I'm comfortable with. This is the way I'm comfortable consuming television. And and most importantly, most importantly, I consume television with my family. I, I know, I know. Maybe 10 years from now, it'll be a situation where 99.9% .9 of people, if they're in the same room, they're each watching their own screen anyway. I bet there are a lot of families that are like that already. But for my family, you know, we watch together. Now, I'm not going to say we're always paying 100% of our attention to the, the living room television. You know, sometimes we're playing games on our phones or, or finding out what that actor's name was or answering an email or whatever. But, you know, for us, watching television is a communal experience. And realistically, that just works better with satellite TV because it keeps the bandwidth clear for whatever it is we're doing on our phones, for one thing. And second of all, satellite TV just gives more reliability and a little bit easier experience. You don't have to worry about, oh, is it Saturday night? Everybody in the neighborhood is streaming, and so I'm not going to be able to connect to whatever. Look, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in live satellite television, and I didn't realize exactly how much money I was spending on something that I didn't believe in. I mean, look at it. You know what, you know what I was thinking just the other day? And, and I, this is going to date me for a while. So um, I first got Netflix in it's streaming, Netflix streaming in, in 2010, 2011. Do you remember Netflix streaming used to be free? If you had a DVD plan, Netflix, Netflix streaming was free. And, and I was there for the Hulu rollout. And it was 2006, 2007, whatever. Hulu used to be free. These, these were services that they just gave you. And now, um, between the, the Disney package and, and Netflix and whatever, just for, for basically Disney Plus, Hulu, and Netflix, that can be almost 50 bucks right there. I mean, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that's a, that's a pretty big proportion of a live TV package right there, just for two apps. And who has two apps? Because, yeah, I mean, you get a bit Paramount Plus and you got to have stars and you, 
you got to have, I don't know, Prime Video and, and whatever else that is that I watch because, you know, there's going to be one show that you got to watch on each service. And so you just kind of keep it going. But I took some time and I canceled a lot of those services because I'll come back if I find that there's really something I want. But it turns out oftentimes there isn't. Like, you know, I thought about Peacock. I thought I'd really, you know, want Peacock or whatever. They had a lot of of movies that nobody else had, you know, first run stuff from theaters, because after all, they're owned by the same company that owns Universal. But then two months later, those same movies show up on Prime Video. I'm already a Prime subscriber, so I could get it for free. You know, there there's Max, which, you know, you pay a lot of money for Max, by the way, and you're going to keep paying more and more for Max. And okay, so they had movies that nobody else had. They had, you know, the Batman and, and whatever. And they've started sending all of their movies over to Netflix and Prime. So, you know, I all I have to do is wait another month or two and I can watch them there on an app that I'm already subscribing to. So, you know, it, it, the economy of it just doesn't make a lot of sense. On the other hand, live TV via satellite never disappoints me. It's always something to watch. There's always something where even if I'm totally bored, I can put on a shopping channel. And yeah, 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 I know shopping channels are like the worst. They're like the bane of everybody's existence. But darn it, if I don't enjoy watching them myself, just put on a shopping channel and see what it is that they're demonstrating. And, you know, heck, sometimes I actually buy stuff. I am, I'm a live TV guy. And what, as I said, and kind of at the beginning of this, what I said is I'm surprised by how many of you are still live TV guys and what the demand for live TV is. Don't be afraid to say it. Don't be afraid to say live TV is still awesome. Live TV is better than ever. And live TV is not full of apps that are trying to raise prices every six months for no particular reason or slide in commercials on something that never had commercials before or some other weird way of looking at things. Live TV has been there for you for decades and live TV is going to be there for you for decades. It's the friend you know you can depend on. One last thing before I close up the Solid Signal podcast for this week. Um, as I am recording this on Monday, September 25th, it is looking like the long going writer strike is finally going to come to an end. Apparently there's a tentative agreement and the membership just has to vote on it. And uh, members of SAG-AFTRA have said in the past that once the writer strike came to an end, it would provide an easy framework for the actor strike to come to an end. So it would be very likely that an end to the actor strike would be coming very quickly after that. That's very good news. I'm not going to go into the politics of whether strikes are appropriate or unions or any of that stuff. That's not what this podcast is all about. On the other hand, I'm just glad that it's over. Uh, if you want to say that it was worth it, if you wanted to say that these people uh, dug their heels in for something that they believe in, fine. If you want to say it wasn't worth it, that's up to you. That's your opinion. Totally cool. Get it. But the one thing that we can all agree on is it's gone on a very long time. And if there's any hope for salvaging scripted programming at all for the rest of 2023 and into 2024, it's in ending this strike right now. There's going to be a big chunk of time when these content creators are struggling to get stuff out fast enough so that there's not just a big old hole in the schedule and it's got to happen soon. So I congratulate the members of the Writers Guild of America and hopefully very soon I will congratulate the members of SAG-AFTRA and also uh, finally I guess to congratulate the studios themselves who seem to have come to the table earnestly and everybody got the deal that they can live with. Congratulations to all of you, and I look forward to seeing new content coming all the time. I, on the other hand, am not a Writers Guild of America or SAG-AFTRA member, so therefore I continue to create content here for you on the Solid Signal podcast and also at blog.solidsignal.com. And what's it powered by? It's completely free to you. All I ask is that you like, subscribe, and leave a comment. It makes me look good to my bosses. And tune in every week when, if you feel like it, Shop at SolidSignal.com or call us at Signal Connect 888-233-7563. That's 888-233-7563 for the kind of customer service that you thought was gone for good. 
That's it for the Solid Signal podcast. I know this was a long one. Thanks for listening, and I will see you again next week. Mm-hmm.